Hello everyone, this is Kyle Randall Tanzik from Michigan Medieval. Um, today we're going to be reviewing Hungarian Hussar, Saber, and Foko Schwensing by Russ Mitchell. Um, to tell you a little bit about my personal biases is I am of Hungarian descent and um, the saber fencing that I learned, sport saber fencing, that I learned was also of a Hungarian lineage. Um, so anyway, um, overall look and clarity. So it has a very bookstore kind of paperback look. The cover is clear, you can clearly see what book it is on the spine and stuff. Um, yep, the images and illustrations are all very vivid and crisp and no blurry, smudgy, and maybe a couple of the old scans are maybe slightly blurry in the back, but I mean, it's not like you can't tell what, what's going on in there. Um, the <laughs> one thing that strikes me right up, off the bat of picking this up is the illustrations of people demonstrating techniques are just kind of like normal looking people in modern illustrations. Um, probably this makes the book more relatable, so I, I don't, I think this is just fine. Um, moving on. Durability. Um, not great. Pretty standard paperback bookstore kind of book. Um, paper cover. You can see glued binding. Um, but the images are very bold and clear, and they probably won't fade over time, I wouldn't think. Um, okay, translation transcription. So the first half of the book is modern English account um, of what the author learned while studying in Hungary. Um, the second half of the book um, is a modern translation of a couple of 19th century saber texts. Um, in these translations, it's perfectly readable for a modern English reader in both the first and second half, of course. Um, but for me personally, I would have liked to have seen a lot more kind of HEMA-targeted terminology um, you know, names for cuts in Hungarian, names for parries in Hungarian, um, just more Hungarian language in both the first and second part of the book. Um, we see this really well in, um, some copies of Fiore or other things where, you know, if it's like a, the name of a cut is a Mandretto Fendente, they give it to you in English and Italian so that you know, you know, if you're part of the human community, which you most likely are for reading this book, you know what you're getting yourself into. Anyway, so practicality. Does it stay open? Uh, unfortunately not. Um, table of contents, really, really good one. Um, the table of contents of this is extremely thorough. It's, you can see it's one, two, two and a half, two and a quarter pages long. That's great. Uh, really A plus on that. Um, moving on. Uh, <laughs> are going to be flipping back and forth a lot. So is there, are there sections where like the text here doesn't line up with this and you're going to have to be flipping back and forth? No. This is very, very good and concise about lining up the images with the relevant text, etc. Um, very good about that. Um, it's also a convenient size. I like smaller books with bigger images. This is a small book with small images, but they're very bold, so it kind of does the same thing. Okay, cost. $20 paperback. I don't think there's a hardcover version of this book available. 200 pages is what you get for your money. Um, tons of illustrations. Uh, both Saber and the Shepherd's Axe are covered. Um, it's, a, a, it's, a, it's a good first-hand account of a living style and tradition um, and a couple of relevant translations. So, my overall closing thoughts on this are, if you, <laughs> this is a very unusual Hema book in that it's a record of the author's experience training in a living tradition. Um, it reminds me a lot of instructional texts from Japan that I've worked with, like The Spirit of the Sword. Um, these two kind of seem similar to me in that they're like, it's a it's a, rec a record of a of a living tradition that's still being practiced today, but also has some historical precedent. Um, so, uh, uh, if you're if you the reason they suck in these couple of extra pieces of stuff on the end is to give it more credence for those of us who in the human community are more used to more accustomed to exclusively reconstructing dead lineages. <laughs> And so if at any point you're not sure about, like, his account of a living tradition or the historicity of anything or whatever, you do have these couple of accounts in the back that really do give credence to um, the rest of the text. Um, yeah, okay. Again, this is a good one. It's a very interesting one. Unusual for Hema book. I'd recommend learning it and reading it. Uh, yeah, this is a good one. Okay, uh, please like, comment, subscribe, follow us on Facebook. Thanks for watching, guys.